Well, Wesley, we're taking Disaster Class podcast on the road. I'm Jason Perez. And I'm Wesley Long. And we're bringing you a fresh new take on disaster preparedness. Welcome to Disaster Class. So so while you were um, snoring away... You just have to bring up the story. <laughs> uh, there may or may not be video footage of that, just saying. Um, <laughs> this is what I deal with people. Um, when it's so, announced a split in disaster class, Wesley will no longer be a part of the team uh, due to creative differences. We've decided to part ways. Creative We've decided to part ways. Um, but I'll be starting my own podcast. Called class disaster. Class disaster. <laughs> class disaster. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's get around the copyright infringement. Yeah. You just flip it. That's all you gotta do. So anyway, um, I think we were a little bit back. We was driving we past a uh, old school Hummer H1. Oh yeah, the yeah. real deal, the original. Yeah, like the original. So that got me thinking, um, bug out vehicles. Um, I think we follow a couple pages um, on Instagram of bug out vehicles. People got like the, you know, the Jeep Rubicon yeah. lifted. You just, like, so. you just pop the brakes for just a second. We start talking about bug out vehicles. <laughs> it very quickly usually bleeds into a zombie apocalypse type thing. All right, like very quickly when you start talking about a bug yeah, out vehicle. But this is this is like putting all oh, put a grade on the front so I can run over the zombie. Listen, to each his own. Okay. Right? But I'm just saying, like, there's this whole thing out there about like a bug out vehicle. Like if if something happens and you got to get out of dodge, you know, what's your uh, Okay, so let, let me ask this question. This, this is completely wrong. This, we've never even had this discussion. I know, this is why I wanted to have this, this conversation. Pretty, if we were talking about something like that, what are the first things in, that come to your mind as needs that are a necessity? Well, I mean, everything in our in our class that we talk about, um, you know, paid essentials, water, food, clothing. Yeah, so... I don't disagree with you. My first thought is even before that, though. Fuel. Right, right. So to me, when I start hearing about bug out vehicles, the first thing I'm worried about is if someone has a bug out vehicle, do they have a process so that it is always fueled? Because I think that that's going to be the biggest issue is your first stop can't be, oh, I have to go get gas. Yeah. Right, because if you're using a bug out vehicle, that gas station that you go to, probably inoperable. So to me, when I start hearing about the first thing I'm thinking about is fuel. We were on, we're on, we're on the Jersey Turnpike. We just talked about this because we fueled up um, at the service station, and we saw a sign on there which I had never seen before. The New York, the New Jersey, what was a Turnpike, Turnpike Authority has prohibited the refilling of portable canisters with fuel. Interesting. I just saw that sign today, like yeah. an hour ago. And I was like, wow, that's just really interesting. And your first comment was what? So if you're broken down, you have to be towed. Like if you run out of fuel, you have to be towed. You can't have a canister of gas. Just interesting. Yes, if you want to be tech. Interesting. I mean, I, I guess it's you could have a canister of gas that's just going to be filled at that. That's, uh, anyway. Yeah, whatever. Fuel, to me, is the first thing I think about. Yeah. No, and, it's true. And it goes and to preparedness, right? Because mm -hmm. the fuel isn't... Is this a vehicle that I'm using every day? If it's not, or if it is, how am I refueling it? Making sure it's always going to be at a fuel level where I can get to 
a certain distance, right? I would sort I would be thinking that way. Like, okay, yeah. if I have to get out of Dodge, I mean, even really speaking on one gallon of fuel, depending on your vehicle, right? If it's like a, a big V8 and it's a truck, you might only be getting 13 to 17 miles per gallon. So as long as there's at least one gallon of fuel, you know you can get at least 15 to 17 miles away from point X to where you are. But those are the types of things that I'm thinking about when I first think about a bug out vehicle. The fuel. Fuel consumption. I'm getting, am I getting my best best bang for the buck? And then is am I keeping that vehicle fueled? And then am I having canisters of fuel on it so that I can get even further without having to stop and fill up? Yeah. So for me, bug out vehicle, my first thought is fuel. Um I'm we haven't talked about this before. These people don't even know that I'm like super both of super in the cars. I know. And vehicles. This is why I'm um, like, this is gonna be a fun conversation down here. Let me throw them on that. Yeah. Throw it. Electric car. Unfortunately, um now our I followers, was... our followers are gonna start getting to know a little bit about me. <laughs> as soon as you say electric car, I kinda throw up in my mouth. <laughs> okay, I just I I I, I do not buy Okay, this is tricky. Dude, you're picking some scabs here, bro. So my thing with electric cars... I wanted to make this a fun road trip. That's definitely something. Um, My thing about electric cars is this. I do not personally believe that electric cars are better for the environment than combustion engines. And I feel that way simply because of the power plants needed to generate the batteries for those electric cars Mm -hmm. are pumping out a bigger carbon footprint than the footprints combined of the combustion engines that they're quote unquote saving. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. So to (laughs) me, electric. So now here's it. So why did you bring it up in this scenario? Do you feel that Using electricity as a resource is a better, I less scarce resource. Uh, I don't necessarily have an opinion okay. on what's the you best. You just wanted to rile me up. I do want to rally you up. Yeah. Um, but now sure. here's the, the one thing that would prevent me from getting an electric car mm-hmm. is I think there's one really huge miss, okay. and that is why are electric cars not equipped with solar panels on the roofs? Uh, most are. Some are your high end, like your Fiskars are. Yeah. So that's like, I mean, that's a huge because now if you have that component, right? Because you, you talked about fuel is an issue. It can be. That is a legitimate concern that's a, for, for yeah, this conversation. Yeah. For, for in terms of bug out, and that's why I say like, don't even plan as if you're going to have a vehicle because you know, just leaving the routes, the roads may not be passable. You may not be able to get through. So cars can be sometimes. Yeah, but that's why we have to talk, but that's why we got to talk about vehicle type, right? Because yeah. you know, I'm I'm a huge Jeep fan. Yeah, uh, I'm an ex Wrangler owner. Mm-hmm. To me, I do feel the best type of bug out bag is probably going to be probably going to be a Jeep Wrangler like that Rubicon. I mean, obviously Rubicon because it's going to have the. I mean, you don't need the capability. No normal citizen needs the capability of a Rubicon. I mean, those things are geared to actually do rock yeah. climbing, right? We are not sponsored by Jeep, by the way. But Jeep, not yet. If you want to Jeep, if you're listening, and you, yeah, we could we'll definitely make a Jeep. The, we should get a disaster class done out of Jeep. We should. It would be great for yeah. Jeep. I'm sure Jeep is listening to this thing. Yeah, let's. You're like, we need disaster. We yeah, need Jason. Let's West get in contact with those guys. Face of Jeep. And if I were to have my druthers, then I would also obviously do a 392 Jeep, which is um, sadly. Frankly, sadly, it's been discontinued already. Um, but that's the V8 Hemi that comes from the planet that way. Um, but I would have canisters of extra fuel on it. Uh, and I would probably make sure it never dips below three quarters to half a tank so that I can get the longevity of distance so I could get out of Dodge. And with a Rubicon, you're going to be hard pressed to find to not find a way out. Because I won't necessarily yeah. need the room. Like, That's an interesting thing you just brought up. And I think this is something that, just regardless of what vehicle you have, mm-hmm. people should know, right? We talk about in our class having, um, you know, 
a location to go to in, 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 in the and local, location, right? if it's the location you're going to that might also be compromised but yes, correct yeah gotcha yeah, yeah, so yeah. my my i think it'd be good for, for a lot of people to know like if you have your your different locations you're going to go to the event of an evacuation mm -hmm. your furthest location how much gas will it require you to reach that location? And then, once you have determined that, that's almost like that's you don't benchmark. that's you don't let your car drop below that. Right. <laughs> right. And again, that's why when you mentioned it, it's like I don't want to get into a whole zombie apocalypse thing, but the amount of actual planning and preparation, if you're gonna have a bug out vehicle and it's gonna be Effective, it's going to take daily planning, right? Yeah. Especially if it's your if it's your everyday driver, right? If you're if you're fortunate enough where you can have just this Jeep in a garage somewhere or in a shed, you know, slightly camouflaged, so nobody knows where it is, and you can just park very, it there. Not practical for most people. Not practical for most, right? But if you if it wasn't your daily driver and you could have it just stashed and ready to go, awesome. But most of us. It's not like we're having multiple cars, and we're not by any means saying in order to be fully prepared, you have to go out and buy them. No. Right. So then your daily usage should be taking into account the fact that you might need that vehicle tonight to get to wherever it is on your emergency action plan that you've studied and researched and rehearsed, right? So it's an interesting conversation. I would probably, I'd probably go with a Jeep Wrangler on the top. I mean, I'm partial to Jeep. Start the pit. Which? Uh, you know, if I'm doing this in this just dream world that I'm living where I have all of this expendable capital, yeah, I would. I, why would I not, right? I don't know if I'll need a winch, but if I do and I don't have it, uh-oh. And the one time I need it and I have it, paid for it. Right? So, snorkel kit, for those who don't know, that's it's for your exhaust. Allows you to wade through much, much higher depths of water because you don't have to worry about Get sucked water into getting tank. sucked into the engine. So your, your outlet is up higher like it is in a snorkel. Um, I, yeah, why, why would I not? You know, why would I not? Yeah, I keep some Navi tires on it. Yep. Ready to go. And then in that, I would keep... I'm a big proponent of keeping my um, go bag in my vehicle anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would have almost... I would have my... I'd, if it's a bug out vehicle, it's going to be dedicated to bugging out. So I will have a dedicated kit in there. That probably will be in between a go bag and a shelter in place kit, so I could then live out of my my bug out vehicle. You ever seen those those attached tents on top? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've seen them. I've seen them. I have seen them. It's so funny. We both have done so much research, but it's never talked to each other about. It. I know. Well, you got a fourteen hour drive ahead of us. Yes. It's gonna get interesting. It already has. <laughs> what other vehicles could be a viable option, right? So let's say, so, so let's say it's the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and I'm going with a four door just because of space. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, yeah. And size, right? Mm -hmm. Just so. Especially I, if you got a family. Correct. So let's just let's say, okay, that's pinnacle. That's option one. What's option two? Let's 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 talk about some other options here. I am a big Range Rover. Price point, though, but bro. No, well, I'm, we're talking about so listen, I know, I know. I can never afford a range Rover. No, let's let's just be unless honest. you all but tell your friends to subscribe to Disaster Class <laughs> and promote us, and we'll be there in no time. And so, yeah, I will say this for Range Rover. I do think that as far as the four x four capability of those vehicles, especially the newer ones. I think they are as good, if not better, than Jeep and Street 4x4 capability. Even if you get something like the Evoke, right, which is smaller, um, I think Posh Spice or Victoria Beckham, I think she helped 
warranty sign that. So you might think it's bougie, and it is. But the four-wheel drive capability, even in that Evoque, really is second to none. So from that perspective, it would make an extremely good bug-out vehicle because there's really no terrain that's going to be able to keep it trapped. You know, so from that perspective, I agree. And the Evoke is really, really cool. Um, it's not very buggy Audi. I don't know, bug Audi ish. I don't know. It's just, Let's it's say. just so bougie. Survive versus thrive. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's you thriving. That's fair. That is fair. That is one hundred percent fair. Um, but which Range Rover? Like, I, I went with the Evoke. Are you thinking like a newer, an older, like an old Defender, like a 110? Defenders are nice. You go with a, a Defender 110, I'm down, but they're literally antiques yeah. and they are hard to find. I think they have a new one. They do. There's a new, new version Defender. that just came out. I don't love it quite as much yet, um, but the old 110s, that. So, I. Amazing. So. On our way down to Atlanta, we're going to be stopping in Virginia to see our uh, yes, one of our team members, yes. Melvin. Melvin. Uh, Melvin is awesome, the man. and Melvin's also a big car guy. I would love to get his input on this discussion. By the way, we see man, when you were sleeping, there were so many like opportunities that I saw, like I saw like this guy passed us. Mm-hmm. He had a uh, um, one of those license like a license plate thing. And it said, I have the need, the oh, need, for, the speed. need for speed. But he's in a Corolla. Oh, what? That's what I'm saying. Stop that. Like, in a Corolla. Bing, stop that. Nah, man. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Already fouled. Flag on the play. Doesn't work for me. So you're saying there's so many opportunities for us to be making fun of people. And banter. While I was, while I was sleeping. Yes. Oh, it's understandable. But you were making fun of me I while mean, I was sleeping, so that works out well. We're happy about I'm that. I'm gonna save that footage for uh, for a very special time. For a very special time. I bet. This is what I deal with, people. Yeah, this is what I deal with. So, here's a thought for a bug out vehicle. Mm-hmm. Bicycle. So there's I feel pros like, and cons. I feel like that's like. There's pros and cons. In traffic, like you can, or maybe a motorcycle. Pros and cons. So, to me, it's not a horrible idea, right? Mm-hmm. I, uh, the fuel, though, is your own energy. Correct. So, that's a concern. Um, your fitness level, all of that is going to come into play. Um, ability to carry extra items. Even a normal go bag at what do we say, fifteen to twenty percent of body weight mm-hmm. is acceptable based on our research paper. Um, on a bike, I don't know. It seems like that might be more precarious than just walking. Now, the pros, yeah, you're going to be able to go. I think further than you would if you're walking mm-hmm. faster. Not exponentially, but faster. Right? Depends on the terrain. So. True. True. So there's value in that. But I, to me, it comes down to the fuel. Yes, you, you're bypassing the need for, you know, unleaded gas or diesel. Yep. So if there's a run on those things, you can still power your vehicle. But the power is coming from you. Phone ringing. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Good, you're on the air with Disaster Class Podcast. Yes, thank you for calling in. Oh boy, I am so sorry. I will let you go. No. Uh, what is the name of this caller? Murray? Is that, <laughs> is that, am I reading that correctly? It's pronounced Mara with no H. Oh, Mara, kind of like Sarah. Because H's are Because H's are L. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for calling in. The topic for discussion today is bug out vehicles. 
My, what would be your dream bug out vehicle? I think it would be a Jeep that has a fish costume. That you can, like a submarine fish Jeep. I'm, I'm so sorry. Or you could, <laughs> okay, a submarine fish Jeep. Yes. And uh, you feel the benefits of that would be... You can swim in case of flooding and... So because the could... the Jeep has a fish costume on, the Jeep would be able to swim? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. you're confident in it, that's for sure. Okay. I feel like that's a thing. I feel like I've heard that this is a thing before. This is, I've described to her the snorkel kit for the Jeep and that's I think this it. is what she's talking about. Oh. <laughs> The fish, fish costume. Costume. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're going to put that somewhere in the show notes, right? Um, snorkel in parentheses, fish costume. Yeah, I have to translate. Exactly. Understandable. Exactly. So now oh, I'm yeah, going to totally get it. Glad you know. So you're, you're, so you're thinking Jeep, like the brand? Like a Jeep yeah, yeah. Wrangler? With removable doors. Nice. See, it's another vote for Jeep. Another vote for Jeep. We're going to get Jeep to sponsor this episode of Disaster Class. I don't think we're going to be able to Excellent. stop we'll them have a free giveaway. I would a, like to enter for that. Of a Jeep. We're going to give away a Jeep. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. With removable doors. Removable doors. And a fish costume. And the fish costume. Mm -hmm. I love AKA that. AKA snorkel kit. AKA snorkel kit for yeah. your exhaust. But let's go with fish costume. I like the fish costume. We could probably uh, make a little fin, a little shark fin. Freaking <laughs> doodum doodum. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> Hello. What? Hello. What? Hey, Melvin. Melvin, what is going on, man? How are you? <laughs> hey. What's going on, guys? Good yeah, man. Lot, hey, man. guess what? Um, we're coming to see you. Yeah. I don't know that we told you that, but we're currently on our way to your house. Yes, we're on our way. And we'll be there in like two hours. And you caught us in the middle of doing something here, so now you are going to be put on the spot. We are recording um, content for the podcast. And yes, in the call. Yes, you should have. I'm glad you did. Thank you so much. Um, we're recording content for the podcast, and the discussion for right now is... Bug out vehicles. Bug out vehicles. So, I, I, and I'll say it this way: money, no object. What, what are, what are you looking for for your ideal bug out vehicle? What are you outfitting? Hmm. Um. I'm not sure. Let me think about that for a second. Guys, kind of put me on the spot, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> That was the point, yes. Because we're on a road trip, and we have nothing else to do. And this is completely unscripted, so... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know much about bug out vehicles, so I'm not going to not gonna pretend that I do, but if I was thinking of something, I'm guessing something that would be really rugged and off road. Okay. Um, oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something with... If I had to go with something that I could get right off the lot right now, closest to it, maybe a uh, like a TRX, like a Ram TRX or something. Oh, a TRX. So you're going for yeah. high horsepower, big vehicle, big wheels. Uh, TRX clocks in at over 700 horsepower with a uh, supercharged Hemi. Um, I'm a fan. I, I'm a huge fan. Yes. That is aggressive, yeah, well, but very well sponsored. Go all the way. I have to. I'd have to do that. Oof. I mean, you said no with some stuff. Right? Yeah, nothing oh, yeah, is really going right. to stop you in that vehicle. <laughs> That's what I figured. Nothing's going to stop me, and probably even catch me. So, <laughs> well played, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Now, this does go back to the issue that we talked about with fuel and fuel economy. You have to make sure there's enough fuel in the thing and then have maybe have some extra tanks so you can keep it going. But while you are fueled, you're right. Not much is going to catch you and nothing is going to stop you. <laughs> TRX. I would definitely have to make sure there is some fuel in the back of it because there is... Yeah. I think that thing goes like what? Nine miles to the gallon. Yeah, on a good day. That's highway. <laughs> yeah. But hey, it's going to be a fun nine miles. Yeah. 
I didn't even think about that, the speed with which you would bug out. Because mm-hmm. the TRX is going to get you there yesterday. That's what's up. Yeah. You got your iPods alerts, and then it's like you can beat the traffic. Boom. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And if I have to go off road, I'm going off road. The vehicle is going to thank you for going off road. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, I appreciate where your head is at. <laughs> <laughs> it's always around speed, so I love it. when it comes to vehicle. I should have known. Or in the words of Jeremy <laughs> Clarkson, power! Power! Speed! <laughs> yes! Good stuff. So. Disaster Class is part of the Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services.